it has to be a bit of a a learning thing. I, I think it's something that I learned over the years when I was coming up in the industry. When I was trying to do my thing, especially in the streetwear scene, I was trying to work for Nike. I did like a little Nike role where I was working in this store called 1948. And it was funny because at the time I was working in this store called 1948 in Shoreditch, they kind of sold it to us like, oh, if you work in this store, you could work in the head office. You could be Tinker Hatfield. You could be sketching shoes. You could be designing clothes. You could be the marketing guy going to all the parties, right? But really, it was just a retail job. It wasn't really anything else. So they kind of, they gave us a good, you know, they gave us a good little okie doke. But I liked the job anyway because you got loads of free shoes. We had cool events. And obviously at that time when I was that age, working retail and stores was one of the coolest jobs you could ever have no one could ever talk to me when i was working in that nike store in 1948 in shoreditch no one could ever tell me i had a bad job i fucking loved every minute of it i made some lifelong friends it was fucking incredible but but i realized very quickly working there that i wasn't cut out for that corporate ladder networking thing because there were people that were working there who came into the scene much later than I did, didn't have the knowledge that I had, didn't have the experience that I had, the passion that I had, all this nonsense that I thought was important, they didn't have any of it, they came in later and they were able to choop, completely surpass me when it comes to career-wise. Some of those people are still working at Nike right now, so salute to you guys if you're still out there, right? You guys, you know who you are. Those people are still at Nike now smashing it and I realised, oh... All that shit that I know about polyurethane midsoles, all that shit I know about how to read, how to figure out what day a Nike shoe was released based on the numbers behind the fucking tongue. All that shit I know about, you know, the fucking history of the Nike ACG department. All that shit about, I knew about Nike sportswear. All that shit I knew about tier zero shoes didn't count for nothing because I didn't know how to negotiate my way through that corporate ladder, that corporate industry. Because like, like any other company, Nike is a corporation. I thought it was this cool thing, this like hip thing, which it still is, but it's still at the heart of it, a corporation full of people that you have to navigate around, build relationship with, network, and I did none of that. I was terrible at that. If anything, I went out of my way to be kind of anti-industry. I, I remember there was one particular time, I still cringe, I still cringe, I still cringe at the thought now. There was one particular time, there was like a Nike sales event, right? Nike do these sometimes internal, I think they still do it now. They do these like internal sales event type things. So think of it like, you know, like those Apple presentations, Nike do one in, in like in-house, right? Like an in-house um, presentation where they will preview new releases, new technologies. They'll talk about, you know, sales and maybe uh, opening of a certain store and they usually move it around. So it might be in somewhere in Manchester, it could be in London, but they always in cool locations it'll be fully catered there might be an uh, a, a special artist performing but it's all kind of private corporate event cool no problem they did it one year and one year they invited us right the people that work at the 1948 so in shoreditch and it was weird because we were kind of working for nike but not really because we were kind of really only officially hired as contractors but we weren't hired we were hired by contractors by the people who actually designed the space and not by nike directly so it's a strange relationship so we got invited anyway, which was great. We get invited and there's a presentation happening about, I don't know what it was about, something. And then there was a Q&A section. <laughs> and for some reason, I put up my hand and I started like going back and forth arguing with some like executive about something. Something about a shoe that I didn't like, right? Like some retro, oh, the shape isn't right. Blah, blah. I don't know. I was in my like sneakerhead, crooked tongues, Nike talk, soul collector, fucking stupid angst. So I'm arguing with this guy who's an executive in Nike and I'm in the crowd and I'm like, we're going back and forth. And it's like, imagine how dumb of a move that is now nowadays. Imagine how many relationships I inadvertently completely burned because of that fucking little tip for tat I had. But in the moment, in the moment, I feel like a badass. In the moment, I feel like a badass. Like, yeah, I told that executive, I let him know. He knows that I know, like, I know more than him. At the moment, I felt so fucking hard. I felt like such a badass, right? I felt like such a badass. But later on, I was like, oh, how? And you know what happened? Fast forward a couple, a few years later down the line. And um, essentially, um, when I was working at 1948, 
there was basically this head of marketing role, right? What, that everybody wanted. The head of marketing role was basically the head of like, no, I think it was, it was head of energy marketing. That's what it is. En Nike energy marketing. It's one of the most like prestigious jobs you can get because it's a cool guy job. It, you, you get to go to fashion weeks because Sakai does Nike collaborations. So you basically get to go to Paris fashion weeks all the time and hang out there. And Paris fashion week is the home of menswear and streetwear studios and whatever it may be. Right. And showrooms, you get to go to all the cool Nike events. You get to get loads of free shoes. You might even get to arrange or hook up collaborations between certain people. So it's, a, it's one of the best jobs you can get. And at the time when I was working at 1948, there was this guy called Runner Joy who basically was the one that was, no, not Runner Joy, it was A-Side. I think it was A-Side, no, it was A-Side actually. I'll take it back, it was A-Side. So A-Side from um, No Vacancy Inn was the one that was in charge of putting that team together that worked in 1948. And back in the day, you know, I don't really talk to him anymore now, but me and A-Side were cool. And he's the one that kind of recommended me for that role. So he recommended me for that role and other people that worked there. So that was cool. But then A-Side leaves like six months into the role, like completely. He quit Nike. And I think he moved to the States at that time to pursue his music and what he's doing now currently with No Vacancy and all the other stuff he does, right? And then another guy came in, right? This other guy came in and he liked us though. So he liked us. We were cool. We got along because I kind of knew him from the London nightlife scene. And if anything, he actually put me in contact with a guy that opened the alibi. And I was able to do that club night with my friend called So Special that was fucking cool for four years. And we got going there. But then unlucky for me, in that time that new guy came in, that's when that Nike argument thing happened at the sales event. And then when he left, this other woman came in called Sharma Dean, who, um, who I like. She's, she's cool. I like her, right? She's a nice woman. She's the one that launched uh, War Nails and she does all this other entrepreneurial stuff I don't really know too much about, but she seems like she's fucking smashing it, right? So big up Sharma Dean. But when Sharma Dean came in, she had a completely different vision. So she got rid of all of us. She fired all of us, right? Except the people that she obviously liked. I think maybe two people. But it's no surprise that I got fired because I had no connections. I had no network. I had no um, allies. I had no friends in that in that corporation. And it was all my fault because I didn't do the necessary work to like rub elbows with people to like say hi. Like, because even though we weren't part of Nike, we, I could have easily gone to their head office, which I think is in like Tottenham Court Road. Nike have a head office in Tottenham Court Road somewhere like that. I could have easily gone in there. I could have easily been a bit more friendlier. I could have spoken to some guys at Nike at during the store events when they would come to 1948, but I was always a little bit too cool for school, standing in my own corner, talking to my own friends, all that sort of shit. And then later on, when it came to the time when I needed to keep my job, when it came time where I needed somebody to maybe put in a word for me, they were nowhere to be found. Why? Because I didn't fucking nurture the relationship. And I think I realized really early on in my career, I was like, man, that was a big mistake. But it was also quite, quite, um, it was eye opening because I think for me, I realized that I can't be that guy anyway. So I don't have it in me to do that whole like, kissing babies shaking hands thing i can't do it it's just not it's not something that's in me but i also because i'm all okay with that i'm now i now, i now don't look at people who do lick ass who do kind of smooch who do kind of rub shoulders i don't look at them as, in a bad way but in the past i did in the past i'll judge somebody who was really good at networking like oh man this that guy's a beg that girl's a beg look at her she's just sucking dick he's just licking ass but no it's a talent it's a talent that ability to like network, that ability to be on the good side of people. Like even, I know, I'm sure some of you guys would know this. I know people who've worked in shop floors at fucking Tesco's, your equivalent to fucking Walmart, who've worked there as a weekend person and some person from the head office comes in and they're able to have some sort of nice chat with them, like, you know, in passing and suddenly they get a sick job because of that ability to network and talk. Whereas if that was me and I was mopping floors in some store and some head office person came in, I wouldn't even try and look at them. I would just be like, oh, angry. Oh, fuck them. I'm not looking at them. Do you know what I mean? But there's some people that can see that opportunity of working part time somewhere as opportunity just to get their foot in the door and then build on that way. So I think with Monique, the one thing I don't like about her is I don't feel like she appreciates or she understands how some people are not willing or shouldn't be put in a position where they should risk their networks, their relationships, um, their hard work that they've done all of the years just to help you out. Just because you, you want to be anti, they have to help you. You know what I mean? Because that's the way I am. I'm anti, 
But then I do my own thing. I want to build my own island. I want to have my own thing. I want to open, like, even with the DJ stuff, I want to eventually open my own club. I'm, I'm anti, but I'm not crying for people to help me out. Do you know what I mean? But I think with Monique, she's anti and she's standing for up for the, you know, for the creatives and she's standing against the industry, but then she still wants the industry validation and help. That's when it's a little bit, you know what I mean? It's a little bit double, you know what I mean? It's kind of like you're talking out both sides of your mouth. You can be anti, but you have to be anti and st and and know and know what it comes with. Know that it comes with a lot of loneliness. It comes with a lack of collaboration. It's going to take a, like, for me personally, like, it's going to take a far longer time for me to get to where I want to get to than if I would have done it with a bit more help. If I would have been a bit in a crew, if I would have done it with a collective, if I was a bit more in the network thing, that would have helped me. But I also know I can't do that. So I don't do it, but then I don't look down on the person that does do it because that is a talent and that's an ability in itself. Do you know what I mean? That people should kind of respect and honor. So it's kind of one of those things that, you know, I've kind of realized over time. Exactly. People say, Agostino, don't do that. You can't, no, you, but yeah, I know. I've learned my lesson. Young Old Vibes, I've learned my lesson. Um, I've learned my lesson. I know not to do that anymore, but I look back at those times and I cringe. I cringe so much because back then I really did think I was a shit. And I thought I was a shit for what? Because I had knowledge about Nike shoes. Do you know what I mean? That I thought that was, I thought that actually counted for something. And I didn't really understand that. No, you dickhead. Nike is like any other fucking corporation. It's like any other workplace. Like what you know doesn't really matter, really. Um, as much as 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 good as it is to be good at what you do, it's also important to be well liked. It's also important to have friends. Like, you know, I'm not saying anything fucking um, eye-opening here. Do you know what I mean? Like, as much as you should focus on doing a good job, right, you should also focus on also being a, a joy to be around. You don't want to walk into a room and people be like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. Here comes fucking Martin Luther King of fucking, you know, of Nike. <laughs> We're going to get a fucking TED Talk from him. You know what I mean? So I think all those things are kind of uh, go into the same sort of lane.